Star Trek paved the way for television in many ways. It was a slower paced sci-fi show that used its premise to explore racial and political issues, while simultaneously being an early show to prominently feature a biracial cast at the forefront. The show was not only ahead of its time in its casting and storylines, but also in the technology presented. In fact, part of the fun I had making this list was realizing how many things I use today that I take for granted, which used to be considered science fiction. From Google Home to Skype, and even this thing right here, all predicted as part of the future in Star Trek. So let's take a look at the 11 times Star Trek predicted the future. In watching Star Trek The Next Generation, you'll regularly witness characters walking around with pads or personal computers they'll use by swiping and tapping with their fingers. While this is a common sight today, with touchpads being on things like tablets, phones, and even some personal laptops, while various companies have been trying to create touchscreens, the technology didn't properly exist in the real world when the next generation was being made. Revolutions in touchscreen technology came about with the iPod, iPhone, and eventually iPad, which truly resembled Star Trek's pad. According to illustrator and designer of the pad, Rick Sternbach, I can understand why there's been some hoopla over the comparison to recent computers, particularly the iPad, but I really see the pad as simply an outgrowth of science fiction data displays imagined for decades in literature and on screen. It's pretty common to see characters on the Enterprise flip out a communicator, flip it back, and then go on their way. While this is so normal for us to watch today, that's not really even worth thinking about. This was the realm of science fiction back when Star Trek was created. That's not to say there wasn't anything resembling a cell phone. Ever since the early 1900s, both governments and private companies had tried to create such a wireless technology, typically utilizing radio waves. However, these conversations could be eavesdropped on, similar to listening to any channel on the radio if you know the right frequency. It wasn't until 1973 that the first true mobile phone prototype was unveiled, with 1983 being the year the first commercial analog cell phone was released to the US. Even then, flip phones like this were still a ways away. Yes, I still have my razor from high school, don't ask me why. Mobile flip phones, just like from Star Trek, were finally released in the 1990s, so it would take 30 years for the science fiction of Star Trek to become reality. It's fairly common to see the crew of the Enterprise interacting with other species via the view screen on the bridge. Not only that, but sometimes on more mobile devices as seen in the original series. However, these were only the realm of science fiction back during the 60s of the original series and even the late 80s to early 90s of the next generation. While there was extremely rudimentary video conferencing as early as in the 1930s, it wasn't until computers of the 1980s that this became a true possibility to the level seen in Star Trek, with the 1990s seeing webcams spreading across universities. With Skype, video communications exploded, and today it's hard to find a large company whose office doesn't include a video conference room. Meanwhile, our phones have FaceTime, making it extremely easy to communicate via video. We truly have a remarkable piece of technology in our pockets at all times. You thought I was done with cell phones? Well, not yet. Hello? In the original Star Trek, we regularly see Uhura, the translator and communications officer, using an earpiece that lets her keep track of various communications and potential threats. Once again, this seemed like far futuristic technology during the original run of the 60s, and in 1999, the first consumer hands-free headset was launched, the Bluetooth. It may look a little ridiculous when Dr. Beverly Crusher uses a hypo spray on her patients to inject vaccines and other medicines into her patients utilizing compressed air. Yet, as it turns out, we're not so far away from this technology ourselves. There actually was a similar technology used in real life prior to Star Trek called the Jet Injector. However, it has its limits and its use has been limited, and nowhere near as widespread as seen in Star Trek. In 2012, MIT announced they've been working on an improved jet injector, and further improvements to the technology continue to be made. Perhaps we'll soon be living in a future where hypospray devices are commonplace, just like in Star Trek. In the first season of The Next Generation, Beverly Crusher uses an eyepiece to help her treat Worf in the episode Lonely Among Us. While the idea of wearable smart glasses was in the works as early as in the late 90s, still after the 1987 air date of the episode, it wasn't until the 2010s that smart glasses would truly see the light with a Google Glass prototype in 2011. 
Notably, the technology has seen interest in the healthcare field, with various hospitals interested in the idea of using the technology to help eliminate electronic health recording, which could save on some doctor's workloads, as well as in surgery. The technology is also being used to help treat autism, with the various displays on Google Glass supposed to help people with autism teach themselves better social skills. 1974, David E. H. Jones conceptualizes the idea of 3D printing in New Scientist. 1984, the first 3D printing patent was created by Bill Masters. 1986, the first commercial 3D printer, the SLA-1, was released. 1987, Star Trek, the next generation unveiled the Replicator. While 3D printing was already a reality, it was such a primitive reality with so few functions, it was nowhere near viable when the next generation released. In the next generation, the Replicator can essentially 3D print food for the crew to eat. In real life, 3D printing wasn't suitable for much outside of creating three-dimensional prototypes when it was first created in the late 80s and even early 90s. However, fast forward to today, and we've seen vast leaps in 3D printing. With the advent of multi-material printing in 2014, 3D printing is becoming more and more practical. And hell, I've actually eaten 3D printed candy before. While this is certainly nowhere near the level of the replicator, it does seem similar technology is on its way. Suppose one of your cave-dwelling ancestors were to see you as you are today, what would she think? I don't know. Well, put yourself in her place. You see, she cannot kill a hornbuck at a great distance. You can. You have a power she lacks. Only because I have a bow. She has never seen a bow. It doesn't exist in her world. To you, it's a simple tool. To her, it's magic. Similar to 3D printing, virtual reality isn't at Star Trek levels yet. But when using the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, or PlayStation VR, it's hard not to think of the next generation's holodeck. The holodeck is generally used for recreation in the next generation, with it simulating various eras from history, or really, whatever the user wants. It seems like it can take on any shape or size once in use, and also simulates virtual people, or NPCs like from a video game. Really, the only difference between the holodeck and modern virtual reality is that in the holodeck, users can freely move around with their own two feet in a seemingly limitless space and not need a headset. But outside of that, virtual reality is getting there. Maybe we're not so far off from a holodeck future after all. There's multiple types of tricorders used in Star Trek The Original Series, with the main ones we see being used for engineering, medical purposes, and a standard one used for general purpose scouting. Specifically though, I'm going to talk about the medical tricoder used by Bones in the original ser- The medical tricorder had the capability of scanning a patient and instantly diagnosing what was going on in them. While medical tricorders don't exist yet, leaps and bounds have been made. In 2012, Qualcomm introduced an X-Prize competition, awarding $10 million to whomever invents a tricorder capable of letting a consumer self-diagnose at least 15 different medical conditions. Meanwhile, other companies are working hard on this technology as it's viewed as having a significant return on investment once created. Computer, release compound ADTH into the airflow system. Five parts per million. Acknowledged. Initiating compound release now. At this point, we take for granted the fact that Siri has been around, and similar technology has been utilizing devices like Google Home. But when Star Trek aired, the idea of talking to your computer seemed like a distant future sci-fi concept. While Siri released in 2010, with similar technology around before that, smart speakers didn't truly come into prominence until the late 2010s, and there are much more recent developments, bringing us ever closer to a computer system akin to that of the Enterprise. Translation request being patched. Translation? From whom? Evacuate. The universal translator used in Star Trek to seamlessly talk to alien species has long seemed like far-off fiction with no basis in reality. And yet, in 2020, we're ever closer to having a real-life version of this. 
while current technologies only allow for known languages to be converted and definitely are seamless, as of January 2020, Microsoft Translator now supports 65 languages and works in tandem with Skype Translator with 11 different languages in speech. I understand everything you're saying. The end is nigh. Excuse me? The end of the video. What real life technology do you take for granted? Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.